Tonight we're going to share just for a few minutes um, on the blood of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Somebody say the blood of Jesus. The blood of Jesus. The blood of Jesus. As we approach Easter, aren't you thankful for the blood of Jesus? Amen. Easter is just about a month away when our Lord and Savior Jesus died for us. Hallelujah gave up his body, shed his blood for us. Amen. Amen. And so tonight we're going to look for a little while, for a short while, on the blood of Jesus. Um, we're going to read from the book of Exodus chapter 12, from verse 1 to 14. So please turn to the book of Exodus chapter 12, verse 1 to 14. Media team, I don't know if we can please project that passage. But tonight, as we look at the story of the Passover lamb, that's a story in the book of Exodus, chapter 12, verse 1 to 14. It is an account of when God gives the Israelites the instructions on the Passover lamb. And we're looking at that story tonight because it typifies Jesus. Amen. Amen. It typifies Jesus. The book of Revelation 13, verse 8 says, Jesus is the lamb that was slain from the foundations of the world. So the book of Exodus chapter 12 typifies Jesus just like Abel's offering in Genesis chapter 4 also typifies Jesus. The Bible says Cain brought an offering, Abel brought an offering. He, he, he brought the fat of an animal. To bring the fat, he would have had to sacrifice an animal. Amen. Amen. And so these passages typify Jesus, who is the Lamb that was slain from the foundations of the world. Amen. Amen. Now these are Old Testament stories. Amen. But we know that the Old Testament is a foretelling of the New Testament. Amen. Amen. The Old Testament is the New Testament concealed. Amen. Amen. And the New Testament is the Old Testament revealed. Amen. Amen. So we're looking at Old Testament stories, but the points we're going to make tonight are powerful points. And we as believers, we must avail ourselves of the power that is in the blood of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Are we in Exodus chapter 12 tonight? Mm -hmm. Verse 1. And Jehovah spake unto Moses. Brother Jude, do we have the King James translation available to us tonight? Do you think we can make it work? Uh, no. Or New Living Translation? No. <laughs> King James. Let's go with this. No, no, I got it. You got it? Okay. And the Lord spake, thank you very much. And the Lord spake unto Moses and Aaron in the land of Egypt, saying, This month shall be unto you the beginning of months. It shall be the first month of the year to you. Speak ye unto all the congregation of Israel, saying, In the tenth day of this month, they shall take to them every man a lamb, according to the house of their fathers, a lamb for an house. Amen. Amen. And if the household be too little for the lamb, let him and his neighbor next unto his house take it according to the number of the souls. Every man, according to his eating, shall make your, shall make your count for the lamb. Your lamb shall be without blemish, a male of the first year. Ye shall take it out from the sheep or from the goats. And ye shall keep it up until the fourteenth day of the same month. And the whole assembly of the congregation of Israel shall kill it in the evening. And they shall take up the blood and strike it on the two side posts and on the upper door post of the houses wherein they shall eat it. And they shall eat the flesh in that night. Somebody say in that night. In that night. In that night. And they shall eat the flesh in that night. Roast with fire and unleavened bread and with bitter herbs, they shall eat it. 
eat not of it raw, nor sodden at all with water, but roast with fire, his head with his legs, and with the pertinence thereof. And ye shall let nothing of it remain until the morning. And that which remaineth of it until the morning, ye shall burn with fire. And thus ye shall, and thus shall ye eat it with your loins girded, your shoes on your feet, and your staff in your hand. And ye shall eat it in haste. It is the Lord's Passover. For I will pass through the land of Egypt this night and will smite all the firstborn in the land of Egypt, both man and beast. And against all the gods of Egypt, I will execute judgment. I am the Lord. Amen. And the blood shall be to you for a token upon the houses where ye are. And when I see the blood, and when I see the blood, I will pass over you. And the plague shall not be upon you to destroy you. Amen. When I smite the land of Egypt. Yes. Verse 14. Amen. And this day shall be unto you for a memorial. Amen. And ye shall keep it a feast to the Lord throughout your generations. Ye shall keep it a feast by an ordinance forever. Amen. 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 And so we see here, if we continue in the, in, in, in the story, we're not going to read that tonight, but we see the powerful deliverance that God gives to his people, the Israelites, the people of Israel. The blood, we're talking about the blood of Jesus. Amen. Amen. We're talking about the blood of Jesus. And tonight I want us to discuss three lessons, three critical things about the blood of Jesus. And the first thing is that there is power in the blood of Jesus. Amen. 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 There is power in the blood of Jesus. I'm reminded of that song. There is power, power, one dross walking power, one dow walking power in the blood of the Lamb. There is power in the blood of Jesus. There is power in the blood of Jesus. His blood avails. His blood avails. First Peter tells us about this power. First Peter 1 verse 18. It tells us that we are redeemed by the blood of Jesus. That we are redeemed by the blood of Jesus. Brother Jude, will we be able to? For as much as ye know that ye were not redeemed with corruptible things as silver and gold from your vain conversation received by tradition from your fathers. Verse 19. Amen. Amen. God is good. Thank you very much, Brother Jude. I know you're working uh, over time. We're redeemed by the blood of Jesus. That's what we see in verse 19. The precious blood of Jesus. But with the precious blood of Christ, as of a lamb, without blemish and without spot. We are redeemed by the blood of Jesus. The blood of Jesus cleanses us. The blood of Jesus is what redeems us. It's what guarantees us passage into God's kingdom. Amen. Amen. First, just one, first John 1 verse 7 tells us that the blood of Jesus cleanses us from all sin. All sin. And so we have confidence when we give our lives to Jesus. We have confidence that his blood cleanses us from all sins. There is power in the blood of Jesus. It is only Jesus. It is only the blood of Jesus that can cleanse from sin. It is only the blood of Jesus that can cleanse from the guilt of sin. It is only the blood of Jesus that can pick a man or a woman up. And take away the judgment that sin would have brought. Only the blood of Jesus. And we see in our passage in the Bible reading that we read in Exodus chapter 12. That the blood of Jesus protected God's people, the Israelites. Protected them. While the land of Egypt was in wailing and mourning. The land, the, the land of Israel was at peace. The abode of the Israelites was at peace. Why? Because there is power in the blood of Jesus. 
That passage we read says, when I see the blood, I will pass over you. Look at the power. When I see the blood, I will pass over you. Tonight, as a congregation, we will get there later, but I want us to know that we are marked with the blood of Jesus. Amen. And because we are marked with the blood of Jesus, we have power. The power of God protects us. The power of God defends us. Amen. The power of God is our rock and our strength. The Bible says, as the mountains surround Jerusalem, yes. even so, God surrounds his people. Amen. From now and forever. Come on, say, I am covered by the blood of Jesus. Come on, say, I am covered by the blood of Jesus. Come on, say, I am covered by the power in the blood of Jesus. Say, my family is covered. My family is covered in the blood of Jesus. My family is covered in the blood of Jesus. My children are covered in the blood of Jesus. Oh, this church is covered in the blood of Jesus. The power in the blood of Jesus avails for us. The blood of Jesus. We're talking about the power in the blood of Jesus. Now, what is the secret of this power in the blood of Jesus? What is the secret of the power in the blood of Jesus? Medical science tells us that there is a genetic link between the father and a child. Amen. Amen. If the paternity of a child is in doubt, what do they do? They do a DNA test. They do a paternity test. Amen. Amen. So the proof, the proof is in the blood. Amen. 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 The proof is in the blood. Amen. If there's any doubt, you do a test and it is settled. Now, who was the father of Jesus? God. In the book of Luke chapter 1, verse 26 to 35, we won't read it tonight. Or maybe we should read it tonight. Brother Jude, thank you. This summarizes the account. Let's jump to verse 29, please. The angel Gabriel comes unto Mary, and when she saw him, she was troubled at his saying and cast in her mind what manner of salutation this should be. And the angel said unto her, Fear not, Mary, for thou hast found favor with God. And behold, thou shalt conceive in thy womb and bring forth a son, and shall call his name Jesus. He shall be great. And shall, be called the, and, he, and shall be called the son of the highest. And the Lord God shall give unto him the throne of his father David. And he shall reign over the house of Jacob forever. And of his kingdom there shall be no end. Then said Mary unto the angel, How shall this be? Seeing I know not a man. Next verse please. And the angel answered and said unto her, The Holy Ghost shall come upon thee. Amen. And the power of the highest shall overshadow thee. Therefore also that holy thing which shall be born of thee shall be called the Son of God. Amen. Who is the Father of Jesus? God. God is the Father of Jesus. The secret in the power of the power in the blood of Jesus is that God is the Father of Jesus. Amen. The proof is in the blood. The power is in the blood. Jesus bears the genetic link to the Father because God is his Father. Amen. And so tonight we have confidence. We have confidence in the blood of Jesus. Because there is power in the blood of Jesus. Amen. 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 Are we being blessed tonight? Amen. Amen. Number two. So number one is what? There is power in the blood of Jesus. Number two is that the blood of Jesus covers your situation. Somebody may say, oh, there's power in the blood of Jesus. That's good and well, but does it really apply to me? I have good news for you tonight. As a believer, the blood of Jesus covers your situation. Amen. Amen. 
It covers your situation. We, we saw earlier, 1 John 1 verse 7, the blood of Jesus cleanses us from all sin. Amen. 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 It cleanses us from all sin. Now in Genesis chapter 4, we see the account of the story of Cain and Abel. When they bring their sacrifices, and I said it earlier, Abel brought his offering. And to bring his offering, Abel had to sacrifice, make a sacrifice of an animal. Now it's been said, and rightly so, that the sacrifice that Abel made was covered his own sin. Amen. Amen. The sacrifice that Abel made covered his own sins. Now in the book of Exodus chapter 12, which we read earlier, we see very specifically, Brother Jude, if you can go back to that. In the book of Exodus chapter 12, we see very specifically that the animal that was being sacrificed was specifically per household. Amen. Amen. It covered a household, and perhaps if the household was too small, Several households would come together. Verse 3. Every man shall, shall take to them every man a lamb, according to the house of their fathers. A lamb for an house. Amen. Amen. A lamb for an house. We're talking about the blood of Jesus covers your situation. So the blood of Abel covered one person. The blood of a lamb in the Passover covered a family. But aren't you glad tonight? The blood of Jesus in the book of John. In the book of John chapter 1 verse 29. John says, behold Jesus, behold the lamb of God who takes away the sins of the whole world. The blood of Jesus covers the sin of the whole world. In, in, in the book of John, 1 John, excuse me, chapter 2, verse 1 to 2, it says the blood of Jesus, it Brother Drew, can we put that on the screen? 1 John, chapter 2, verse 1 to 2. Amen. Amen. Verse 2, and he is the propitiation for our sins, and not for ours only, but also for the sins of the whole world. Amen. 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 The propitiation for the sins of the whole world, the blood of Jesus covers your situation. Amen. Amen. It cleanses us from all sin. It doesn't matter how difficult. It doesn't matter how, how, how challenging. It doesn't matter how long standing. There is power in the blood of Jesus. And that power covers your situation. Come on, say to, my, to yourself, that power covers my situation. That power covers my situation. That power covers my situation. And it is my prayer tonight that the blood of Jesus will avail for you. In the name of Jesus. So number one, there is power in the blood of Jesus. Number two, the power that is available in the blood of Jesus covers your situation. It covers your family. It covers the whole world. Amen. Amen. And number three is that the blood of Jesus needs to be applied. Amen. Amen. It needs to be applied. Amen. Amen. Brother Jude, let's jump back to Exodus chapter 12. The blood needs to be applied. Let's jump to verse 4, please, sir. Let's keep going, Brother Jude. Let's keep going. Let's go to verse 6. I'm looking for the place where it says, And they shall take of the blood. Amen. Verse 7. And they shall strike it on the two side posts and on the upper door. They shall, it, it says they are applying the blood. Amen. Amen. The blood of Jesus needs to be applied. Yeah. Amen. Amen. God was the God of the Israelites. But he made them apply the blood. In fact, further on, we see instructions that says, when I see the blood, every household where I see the blood, I will pass over. It was not enough that they were part of the covenant. 
by birth. Amen. 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 The, the Bible says, when I see the blood, the blood has to be applied. Amen. Amen. The blood of Jesus has to be applied. Amen. Amen. An evangelist was invited to a debate with an atheist. And uh, during the debate, the atheist went on the attack and said, I, I have an issue, I have an issue with the blood of Jesus. The blood of Jesus has been around for about 2,000 years. And yet there's still so much evil in the world. There are still so much problems in the world. And the atheist felt he had scored a great point. That's why the blood of Jesus cannot be real. It cannot be authentic. It must be fake. And the evangelist replied and said, there is a lot of soap in the world. Amen. Amen. There's a lot of soap available in the world. Amen. Amen. But yet, there are still a lot of filthy people around in the world. Amen. There are still a lot of smelly people around in the world. Amen. Mr. Atheist, I submit to you that it doesn't matter how much power there is in soap. The soap will never work for you unless you apply it. It is not enough for us to talk about the blood of Jesus. It is not enough for us to preach about the blood of Jesus. It is not enough for us to sing about the blood of Jesus. We must reach out and apply the blood of Jesus. We must reach out and say, God, in this situation, I apply the blood of Jesus. I apply the blood of Jesus. When something comes against you, your first reaction, the blood of Jesus. When evil comes, when a fear comes, when a thought comes, what do you say? The blood of Jesus. You apply the blood. We apply the blood. We must apply the blood. Amen. 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 When a discouraging thought comes, I plead the blood of Jesus. Amen. 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 I plead the blood of Jesus. Amen. When the enemy says they shall not be well with you, I plead the blood of Jesus. Apply the blood. Apply the blood. Apply the blood. We apply the blood by speaking it. Amen. But tonight we're also going to apply the blood by partaking in the communion. Jesus says, as often as you do this, do this as often as you do in remembrance of me. When we partake of the communion elements, when we eat of the bread and take of the wine, specifically the wine, we are applying the blood of Jesus to our circumstance. We are taking the blood of Jesus. Amen. Amen. The blood of Jesus is our protection from any evil that the enemy can invent. The blood of Jesus is our protection from all the evil inventions of the enemy. The Bible says we shall not be afraid for the terror by night, nor for the arrow that flies by day, nor the pestilence that walks in darkness, nor the destruction that wastes at noonday. It says a thousand may fall at your side, ten thousand at your right hand side, but it will not come near you. Amen. Only with your eyes, only with our eyes shall we behold and see the reward of the wicked. Amen. We apply the blood of Jesus against every evil invention of the enemy. Terror by night, arrow that flies by day, pestilence that walks in darkness, destruction that wastes at noonday, the blood of Jesus is enough. The blood of Jesus is more than enough. Yes. Come on, plead the blood of Jesus tonight. Father, we plead the blood of Jesus. We plead the blood of Jesus. We plead the blood of Jesus. 
over our lives, we plead the blood of Jesus. We plead the blood of Jesus. Over our children, we plead the blood of Jesus. We plead the blood of Jesus. We plead the blood of Jesus. Let the power in your blood, Lord Jesus, let it work for us. Let it avail for us. Let it defend us. Let it protect us. In the name of Jesus. As we approach the communion table of our Lord tonight, I want us to come believing. Believing the power that is in the blood of Jesus. I want us to come believing that there is power in the blood of Jesus. And tonight we are partaking of the elements. Our Father in the Lord, Daddy Jew, has taught us that the communion is to be taken at night. Amen. Amen. God gave specific instructions to the Israelites. In that night, it's the Lord's Supper. Amen. Amen. And the fact that it is at night is not insignificant. It is very, very significant that it is at night. Very significant that it is at night. It's not an insignificant detail that it is at night. In the book of Genesis, chapter 1, verse 5, we see the account of creation. Brother Judy, if you can please put that on the screen. In the book of Genesis, chapter 1, verse 5, we see the account of creation. God is creating the world. And he says, And God called the light day, and the darkness he called night. It's not insignificant that God called the children of Israel. When God was about to deliver them, God began the process for their deliverance in the evening. Amen. Amen. Did we catch that detail? But the Jews stay in Genesis 1.5. In Exodus chapter 12. When God is given the instructions in verse, set, in verse 6, he says, The whole assembly of the congregation of Israel shall kill it in the evening. Amen. Amen. I had never seen this before until that Gio taught it. I am grateful for our Father in the Lord. Amen. Amen. The whole assembly of the congregation of Israel shall kill it in the the evening. Amen. Amen. And God called the light day and the darkness he called night. And the evening and the morning were the first day. He didn't say the morning and the evening were the first day. In the account of creation, the first day, the first day G, the Bible says the evening and the morning was the first day. It starts with the evening and concludes with the morning. Amen. It starts with the evening and concludes with the morning. When God told the Israelites, when God is about to begin to deliver the Israelites, he says, in the evening you shall kill the animal. You shall kill the lamb, the, the, the goat or the, or the, I forget what the other animal was. But whatever the animal was, you shall kill it in the evening. Amen. And Daddy Gio taught that when he saw this, he asked God, God, what does this mean? Why is it the evening and the morning that was the first day? And what God spoke to him was this. That for a new era to begin... The previous era must come to an end. For a new era to begin, the previous era must come to an end. For the Israelites, we see that God began and the era of sickness came to an end. Amen. Because they went into the wilderness and the Bible says there was none feeble amongst them. A new era began. 
The era of bondage came to an end. And a new era of freedom began. Amen. Amen. The era of lack came to an end. Amen. They spoiled the Egyptians. Amen. A new era began. As we approach the table of our Lord tonight, I want you to believe. I want you to have faith that as you apply the blood of Jesus tonight, that every error that is not of God, you will name it by name as you apply the blood of Jesus, the power in the blood of Jesus, it applies to your situation and you will apply it yourself. Amen. I will not apply for you. You will apply it yourself. Amen. Amen. That is you will not apply for you. You must apply it yourself. But believe tonight that as you apply the blood of Jesus, that every error that is not of God will come to an end. Amen. I said it will come to an end. Amen. It will come to an end. Amen. In the name of Jesus, Amen. let us rise to our feet tonight. Begin to pray to God. Rise to your feet tonight. Rise to your feet tonight. Begin to apply the blood of Jesus to your circumstance. Begin to apply the blood of Jesus to your situation. Begin to apply the blood of Jesus to your life. Begin to apply the blood of Jesus. I talked about the blood cleanses from all sin. If there's any guilt in your heart, if there's any sin in your heart, tonight apply the blood of Jesus. And be fully assured that you are forgiven. Be fully assured that you are cleansed. Be fully assured that the blood of Jesus cleanses you from all sin. The not maybe, not are you sure, it is certain. The blood of Jesus cleanses us from all sin. Father, tonight we plead the blood of Jesus. Father, tonight we plead the blood of Jesus. Father, tonight we plead the blood of Jesus. Tonight, oh God, in my life I pray that Lord, every error, every error, every error that is not of you, it must come to an end tonight. 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 In the name of Jesus, come on, lift up your voice and pray. Pray for yourself. Pray for your family. Pray for your situation. Oh God, tonight I come before you. Oh God.